First and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belonging to Yahweh, by Sham, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, and double honours to the elder apostles of great Mosul that teaches truth well, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe. This lesson is going to be straight to the point because once you have discernment, you're able to go through these particular topics. Yes, we do videos on Esau. All right, we do videos on these different topics. But again, when you have discernment, you can touch on, on, on all these different topics because you have discernment to see these things. And this lesson is going to be based on what? Covetousness. Covetousness. When you're content, there's no need to be covetousness. Okay, there's no need to have covetousness. And we're going to quickly go into that word covetousness as well, what it means. You go into that word covetousness and it says a painful awareness of another's possessions. So you're eyeing up someone else's possessions. It could be a physical possession which is carnal or it could be a spiritual possession which Yahweh he gives the increase. So whether it's a carnal possession you have, that's from Yahweh Shai. Whether it's a spiritual possession you have, that's from Yahweh Shai. Or an advantage is and a desire to have them to his covetousness, to his neighbor's things, spoils of, enjoy, spoils of enjoyment I might have of his possessions. And another one, eager desire, especially for wealth or possessions, comparing oneself. So it's just, a, it's just not a good spirit to have. And it's very, 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 I've always said it's very dangerous, very dangerous, because it leads to every other sin, covetousness. Something it is wanted and someone who's a little bit jealous of anyone who has a particular thing. And that's how this whole industry is set up like that. The goal is to make you covetous over things that other people have. And Esau pushes that spirit out. That's the spirit of the world. You came into the truth. If you were like that, you're not supposed to be like that. Because what does it lead to? Adultery, murder, theft, robbery. Every single sin you can think of it leads to. And why was why, why did um what happened to Judas when he saw the what's it Mary anointing Yahabashai's feet with that oil with that ointment expensive ointment and they knew was it it was expensive. What was he doing complaining about the ointment? This could be so this could have been sold to the poor. He didn't he never really cared about the poor. He was just about money. So these are the things you have to look out for. This is called discernment. Having discernment. A, co a covetous person has a strong desire to possess something, especially something that belongs to another person. So that's a dangerous characteristic. That's a spirit of the world. All right? And guess what? That spirit, sadly to say, is in the truth. So now let's go to Proverbs 3 and 31, Baba Kasha. Or let the scripture speak. Proverbs 3 and 31. Envy thou not the oppressor. So that's are not the scripture tells us don't envy the oppressor. And who's the oppressor? Esau. This is the same man that had us in slavery that was still under his hands. Okay. This is the man that was butchering you in slavery, doing all types of things to you in slavery, but you're gonna envy him. And what's the envy? When you envy something, it's the same with jealousy. You want. It's the same with COVID. You want their ways. You're going to put on their ways. So if you envy the oppressor, you're going to be acting like him. You're going to be doing things like him. That's why it said, Yahweh Shai said in John 8 and 44, be of your father, the devil and the lust of your father will you do. So envy though not the oppressor, Esau, and choose none of his ways. Because when you envy someone, you're going to what? Choose their ways. You're going to start acting like them. You're going to have start having the correct characteristics. And the wicked of our people, they have the characteristics of Esau without a doubt. Alright? That's why these things need to be what? Put out. Bear me just a minute. Get this in the right order. 
saying about comparing. This is not about comparing at all. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. Because what is it? What is envy? It's comparison. What is uh, covetousness? It leads to comparison. Okay. And the only reason you'd be doing that because you have not worked on yourself as a man of the Lord. You have not worked on what you're good at, what you might not be good at, but you work on what you're good at. And once you work on what you're good at, Yahweh gives you what? Your own personality. So you're not going to be coveting anybody else. You're not going to be acting like them. You're not going to be dressing like them. You understand what I'm saying? 2 Corinthians 10. And we're going to go straight to verse 12. Second Corinthians 10 and we're going to go straight to verse 12 for we dare not to make ourselves of that number of the number what's that number 1444 the elect okay but the scriptures is another scripture it's put on as the elect the hopeful elect so we walk in that confidence that we, we may be that's why I always say hopeful elect but we dare not to make ourselves of that number like you already got a ticket no we don't know or compare there's that comparison. Compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. So you have those that will compare others to other brothers in this truth, compare themselves. Or amongst themselves, that, that same individual that's covetousness, he compare himself with another man because he's insecure. I've never had to do that in this truth. I've never really had to compare myself to anybody because I've always worked on myself. Compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. And you have those that commend themselves in this truth. Commend means to praise themselves. I've heard individuals say, well, I'm a, I'm a good person. Well, what? By whose standards? By your own. By your own standards. See that? Let's continue. But they measuring themselves by themselves. So that's what we're not supposed to be doing. Well, uh, he can do this. He can do that. That's why there's 12 tribes. That's why it's a body. Because what one member can't do of the body, another man can do. And comparing themselves among themselves is not wise so the scripture says that's not that's not a wise thing to do and why does that happen because of covetousness and this is in the truth there should be more topics like this being done it's very rare if you type in um gms covetousness there's only a few there may, maybe four four videos on that particular topic so you're gonna ask yourself hold on a minute four videos but how much there's about there's thousands of brothers in in, in great millstone but there's only four topics on that particular thing, covetousness and jealousy. Whew. So what are all the other topics that men are, see, this is part of the truth. This is part of the sermon, part of prophecy that these things would happen. You would have men in these last days that have these characteristics. The scripture says if you're going to COVID, COVID to prophesy. Nothing's wrong with that. You can COVID to prophesy, but anything outside of that, it's over the top. So now let's go to. Give me just a minute. Scriptures tell us how to deal in this truth. Ecclesiastes 14 and 9. Baba Gashar. Ecclesiastes 14 and 9. Yes, it is, it is a dangerous spirit. Because a man that's covetous, what's he willing to do? Sell out. Okay even give you into the authorities there ain't no telling what a covetous man will do Ecclesiastes 14 and no give me just a minute I'm on the right one 14 and yeah and start at 6 there is none worse than he that envieth himself so it all begins with yourself how you see yourself it all, it all begins with that because if you think you're not of worth you're going to be looking at somebody that Things that are of worth, according to Yahweh Shai, because you gotta have um a self-esteem about yourself. But people that with very low self-esteem, what do they do? That's you envying yourself, and this is the recompense of his own wickedness. So if you feel like that, it may, not for certain, it may be a recompense of your own wickedness. That's why you always gotta have a good mind towards Yahweh Shai. And if he do with good. You do it unwillingly. So there's men that would do good, but it's unwillingly. It's not from a sincere place. And at the last, he would declare his wickedness. And that's what 
Men do they declare their wickedness because if it's not coming from a sincere place, what that wickedness is going to be shown. Verse 8. And when we correct brothers, when we do videos, it's to correct them. Okay, and to send them on the right path, not out of malicious minds, not out of um yeah, just being wicked. Because that will come out as well. An envious man have a wicked eye. Is that what envious? He turneth away his face. Can't really look at you. Always turning his face when you speak. And despiseth men. That's not a good sign. No, that's not a good sign. A covetous man eye is not satisfied. We went into that word covetous. Okay. Is not satisfied. So this is why it's so dangerous. Because you'd think the truth is enough. But you have certain men. They're given the truth. And that's just not enough. They want more. And that's why they go right back into the world. With his portion. So every man's been given a portion. If you're not satisfied with your portion. Because you're, you're, you're covetous. You're greedy. You're jealous. You worry about your portion. And the iniquity of the wicked. Drive up his soul. A wicked eye. Envy of his bread. And this word is known as bread. And he is a niggard. At the table, you go into that word niggas, it goes no manners. Okay, stingy. And that what does it apply with the truth? So a man that's diligent, that shows you he's not a niggard. Because he's diligent, he's sharing. He wants to he wants to spread this gospel, he wants to teach you. So he's not a niggard, is he? Someone that's slothful with the word, that's a niggard. So it's 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 even giving you the characteristics of a niggard. My son, according to that ability. Which, be, which has been given to us through your shape. Do good unto thyself. So it all begins with thyself. If you can't do good to yourself, how can you do good to others? You know what I'm saying? And give the Lord his due offering, which is what this word, and which is our bodies, which we make a, what, a living sacrifice. I hope this lesson is edifying. Let me just a minute. And now we're going to go to... It doesn't need to be a long lesson. about being content with what you have when you're content you don't care about the things of the world because you're content you know what your house has given you the most important thing which is this what wisdom knowledge and understanding which is a blessing you understand what i'm saying this is first timothy six get straight to the point but godliness with contentment so you're content you're satisfied is great gain okay so you're content with what your house has given you in this truth. Does it mean you, you don't want to grow? No, you still seek to grow. If contentment is great gain, so that's gain. All right. The people of the world, they're looking for carnal gain because they don't have faith. For we brought nothing into this world. All right. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. We're not even carrying these bodies out. And having food, the main things, and raiment, clothing, let us there be content. And your house shall always make sure we, we have... We have food in our mouth and clothes on our back. That's enough. That is enough. But they that will be rich, okay, fall into a temptation and a snare. Because with loads of money comes demons, attachments. You have loads of money. If you were if you if you were in this truth and you were a millionaire, you wouldn't be profitable to the ministry, would you? Unless you were handing that out, okay, amongst the different churches. Okay, but if you were a millionaire, what would, what would you be? You'd be more concerned with the money, getting rid of it. That's why Yahweh keeps these men where they're not rich, where they're not poor, they're just in between. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, all right, which drown men in the destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Not, look, look, money is not evil, it's just paper, <laughs> okay. It's what people do to get the money. And what would a covetous man do to get money? Anything. That's why it says it's the root of all evil. The love of money. Especially if a man that has no integrity. Which while some coveted after. So you have men that have coveted after money. They have erred from the faith. And they went right back into the world. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Because they had to compromise themselves. Okay. And that's why the men of the Lord, they're not, going to, they're not going to be compromised on that level. They're going to be able to push the truth and they're going to be able to speak this truth freely. That's why you need to be content 
with what you have. You see how dangerous it is when, when, when you're covetous. Focus on yourself, focus on your talent, and your I will increase you. All right. Psalm 23. The Lord Jehoshaphat is my shepherd, I shall not want. And right here, this word for want, covet, in need. I shall not want, I shall not covet. You can place that word with covet. Because the Lord is your shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because you have enough. Okay? This wisdom, knowledge and understanding is more than any trillion, anything that the Rothschilds have. There's a reason why the Rothschilds, they want to stop this word. Because this is the true riches, okay? You, you so focus on the world, you, you don't see, you don't, you don't treasure this truth. You don't see it as a treasure. You see the world as a treasure. Because your mind's been corrupted. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Which is this word which we're eating of. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Still means running waters. Alright, and what's the running water? These scriptures. He restoreth my soul and leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Alright? So this is our comfort. This is free riches. So when you have this, there's no need to be covetous. You could admire, you could admire a brother's spirit. His growth, his spirit, whatever, whatever you may admire. But don't let that get to the point where you're, for some reason, the, the demons are coming in and you're covetous. Because that can happen and it leads to wickedness, man. So with this, I hope this was edifying and until the next time, shout out to the hopeful in it. Shout out.